my god, stay down. I think this is gonna be a problem. I'm just gonna put my hands back here so I don't touch anything. It costs $13. It comes with its own cord, which means the mic somehow costs even less. But I ask you this, is the Pile PDMIC58 or PUDMIC good? Or is it a pile of shit? Now, this one is a viewer request, and yes, if you request it, I'm going to do my best to make it happen, though <laughs> I don't know if I want any more pile mics in my house. This thing doesn't inspire much confidence, just based on the price, and honestly, it comes off as a glorified karaoke microphone. That said, it's really hard to ignore a $13 microphone, and since it isn't hard to afford... Why not? But the first thing I want to say is this continues the strong tradition of ripping off the SM58. Like, it's just obvious at this point, isn't it? They're even brazen enough to include the 58 in the name. I mean, come on. Bonus points, I guess, for that. Now, the body is basically what you'd expect. Very much an SM58 body. The head comes off to reveal an underwhelming cartridge. The inner head does seem to have a good amount of material in there to help with the pops, though <laughs> we're going to discuss that later. There's a reason there's a clown nose on this. When you open the bottom end, eh, again, kind of underwhelming. The head is sturdy, it doesn't have much give, and it does seem it would be rugged, though I think I might want to do a ruggedness test on some of these SM58 ripoffs. Get subscribed if you want to see that. That sounds like it would be fun. Now, the included cable does seem fine. Seems like it could put up with a decent amount of abuse. The connectors are, well, fine, I guess, though, at this price point, I wouldn't consider them to be top tier. Which does bring us nicely into the specs. This is a dynamic microphone. The polar pattern is listed as unidirectional. It has a frequency response listed from 50 hertz to 15 kilohertz and a sensitivity of negative 54 dB per pascal at 1 kilohertz. Of course, the impedance is 600 ohms. While any mic under 600 ohms is considered low impedance, that depends on the output impedance as well, and that's not listed. So in case you're wondering, yes, this is a high impedance microphone, and they tend to be incredibly cheap and have difficulty with any cable running further than a few meters, which is why the cable is generally coming attached or at least included. This is also something to keep in mind if you're buying this microphone. They have to be plugged into an input that has the high Z ability, basically an instrument input. This is to match the impedance, otherwise it won't sound right. Time for the off-axis rejection of the Pile Pudmic 58. This is me talking directly into the front of the capsule from about six inches away. This is me talking into the side of the capsule from approximately six inches away. This is me talking into the rear of the microphone capsule from about six inches away. Now for a plosive test of the Pile Pudmic 58. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. Literally, I'm four inches off the front of this microphone. Let's see what the clown knows. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. This is the handling test of the Pile Pudmic 58. This is the proximity test for the Pile Pudmic 58. This is me talking directly onto the capsule from about one inch away. This is me from six inches away. This is me from about one inch away. Six inches? One inch. Now I have two high impedance microphones. This one is the Pile Pudmic 58. And this one is the Shure 515 SA, newer, older. This thing's been through hell and back and smelled like somebody smoked it. This one does not, it's brand new. So you're probably gonna get your answer just off that. Now it's time for a comparison between the Pile Pudmic 58 versus the Behringer XM1800S. I don't like this microphone. I don't like this microphone. <laughs> Which one do you like? Okay, we'll move on because I have a feeling these are gonna be pretty level. We'll see in post-production, but I have an idea. Now we have the Pile Pudmuk 58 
versus the Behringer XM8500. I'm meh on this microphone, but I have a feeling it's destroying the pile right now when we go between them. What do you think of the two microphones? Do you prefer the Behringer or the Pile Pudmic 58? Now we have the Pile Pudmic 58 versus a very unfair competitor. This is the Shure SM48, which is supposed to be more of a competitor for the Behringer at XM8500, but it ends up standing on its own in my mind. Anyways, it's a couple dollars more expensive than the Behringer, but I think it sounds better. Which one do you prefer? Do you like the Pile? Pidmic 58, or do you like the Shure SM48? My money's on Shure, guaranteed, hands down. And now, <laughs> this one hurts. This is the pile Pidmic versus the Shure SM58. This is where we're stopping the comparisons between microphones. I think we probably could have stopped at the Behringer, but you know what? Shits and giggles, everybody. Shits and giggles. The pile. Pudmic 58 versus the Shure SM58. Actual Shure microphone that this thing is based on and even has the numbers, which still to this day blows my mind how brazen some of these companies can be. Which one do you like? I didn't really like it. It was on par with the Behringer XM1800S, which does not say much at all. But as soon as you step out of that price range with the XM8500 and the Shure SM48, well, the wheels just come off and the price to performance fails. Now I do find the highs to be quite harsh. The mids are hollow, even though they're boosted and all around, I'm just not really impressed. This is one of those scenarios that if you go low enough, the performance really does start to suffer. For there to be a price to performance king, both the performance and the price have to be a deal. And this really isn't it. When listening to it on its own, it might sound fine to your ear, but as soon as the comparisons start, it basically just falls apart. Honestly, it makes me wonder why anyone would buy a mic that is so clearly limited as a high impedance mic when there's entry level microphones that can work just as well, if not better, for literally just a couple dollars more. Now I get it, every one of those dollars does matter. But there's something to be said about saving a couple extra bucks before you make your purchase. If audio is something that you want to get into, just a few extra bucks can make things go a bit smoother and it will add to the amount of time before you have to upgrade. So that's it. Do you agree? Are you a pile fan? Do you kind of hate me now if you are? Let me know down in the comments. I can take it. Don't worry. Cheers, and I will see you in the next video.